The Sony Trinitron, the pinnacle of televisions for retro video gamers. If you're a retro enthusiast, a Trinitron is the best way to play video games that were made in the 4x3 ratio. Basically anything without an HDMI cable looks best on a Trinitron. Five years ago, a Trinitron was the best because modern flat screen televisions are in 16x9 and the Trinitron had the best picture for a CRT TV in the 4x3 ratio. It didn't really matter what model of Trinitron you got, but the models with component inputs are really the most desired since they can play the most amount of consoles in their best resolution. Not to mention that there is some input lag that modern TVs have that the Trinitrons and other CRTs don't have. But now that's changing. In the past couple of years, there have been a ton of solutions for playing retro video games in a modern way. The Analog and NT Mini brought an FPGA option for the NES and Famicom that output in a native HD. It was really expensive, but then the folks at Retro USB brought over the AVS, which is incredibly more affordable. Of course, the next logical solution was to introduce a Super Nintendo FPGA in the form of the Super NT, and what I think is more needed than anything else, a Sega Genesis FPGA in the form of the Mega SG. These systems offer native HD with zero input lag. They're expensive, sure, but they truly are the best way to play NES and SNES and Sega Genesis titles natively. At $200 a piece, it's a very steep investment, but when you can play almost every game natively on modern televisions, it's a really inviting proposition. While there aren't any other FPGA solutions for consoles newer than the Genesis and the Super Nintendo, there are companies looking to fill the void. Specifically the Polymega which promises HD solutions for disc-based systems like the Sony PlayStation and Sega Saturn. Time will tell how well that works, but it is interesting that we're getting closer to modern solutions for those aging disc-based systems. For the systems that the Polymega doesn't cover, like the Nintendo 64 and GameCube, there are plug and play solutions that allow for better play on modern televisions. The GCHD and competitors replace the need for those expensive component cables for the Nintendo GameCube, and the most recent adapter from Eon gives the Nintendo 64 a much needed facelift for modern televisions, but the same results can be achieved with S-Video cables or an HDMI adapter like the ones from Hyperkin. For a third of the price. Again, these are significant monetary investments needed for each and every system. But if you wanted to still have a legit HD solution for retro video games, you could get these mini systems. Mini systems aren't really new, but the NES Classic from Nintendo really set the standard for what these systems could do. A tiny HDMI system with 1 to 1 controllers and 30 classic games. Nintendo would follow up with the Super Nintendo Classic and other companies would follow suit with mixed results. The PlayStation Classic notoriously came to market at $100 and six months later could be had for $20. Add a flash drive to it and it becomes a very powerful emulation box with very little fuss. The Sega Genesis and TurboGrafx-16 will also get the mini treatment in September of this year and March of 2020 respectively. And I gotta say, those systems will push the Trinitron further out of necessity. Of course, there is still one thing that you can do on a Trinitron that you can't do on a modern television, and that's use a light gun. But that is also being brought into the 21st century as well. Hyperkin is working on a solution to play Duck Hunt on a modern TV, although you can only play Duck Hunt. But the makers of the Polymega promise that they will have a special light gun attachment that will allow every light game available on their systems be supported on your modern TV. And it's a lofty promise that has my attention. I'll be following it closely because if that gun works the way that it's promises, there will be very little need for a Trinitron outside of aesthetic appeal. Until then, I'll be keeping my Trinitron for as long as humanly possible. I really enjoy it because of the aesthetic and also because it has a headphone jack that allows me to play my games at an enjoyable volume without bothering anybody. Trinitrons are still relatively cheap, but they're incredibly cumbersome. Before I had this 22 inch model, I had a 32 inch which weighed over 200 pounds and couldn't be lifted by one person. This smaller model works great because it fits right on my desk and doesn't have a real strain on my back. 
One thing that I didn't cover in this episode is a PVM monitor, which are becoming ever so desirable and increasingly expensive to secure. Some even require extra adapters to run consumer electronics, so these will be for the enthusiast who has to have the best possible picture and has the room for a bulky PVM. But what do you think about the Trinitron and other CRT televisions? Are they still necessary? or are you comfortable with a modern television? Are light gun games worth it to keep a bulky television around? Let me know what you think down in the comments below. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. It really helps YouTube suggest it to others. And if you're new here, in addition to these collector discussion videos, I have a series called Retronomics, which highlights price trends in video games, and a series called Viewer Voted Review, which lets you, the viewer, pick what retro video game I review next. So if that's something that you're interested in, consider subscribing for future content. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Super Nintendo, and I'll see you next time.